Hello, beautiful women of Africa, America, and Australia. Wow, Karina, this is the 22nd of January. Time is going. And we're having so much fun. Yay. Yay. So today, Karina is choosing the topic. Talk to us, Karina. I feel it's so important um, to ask Holy Spirit lead to speak about leaders. Not many of us have discussed the importance of leaders and the importance um, that it actually carries and impacts other people. So it's very important to understand what is a leader and why should we actually listen to a leader in terms of uh, spirituality? Why should we listen to pastors? Why should we listen to governments? Is it, is it essential? Well, if you're watching, yes, it is important to listen to your pastors um, and I'll tell you why because they have um, they pray so they get uh, their knowledge from from God so it's passing down to them to you and they get revelation now I'm not saying that you don't get the revelation that they get in but I'm just saying that they understand what needs to be said because they are shepherding you as the church and God speaks to them on how to guide you and how to take you to the green pastures and how to give you that guidance to get there and not to let you uh, be wayward. So they will correct you through the word of God. They will edify you through the word of God. And you will know if they are speaking truth or non-truth because your understanding from the word of God, your relationship with God's word will help you identify is this biblical? Is this non-biblical? You will, you will know what's right from wrong. So um, one of the topics that one of the, the biblical um, chapters is about Moses. And we see that Moses was, um, you know, he was a good leader. But he, he, there was a lot of people. There was a massive lot of people. And he couldn't manage it himself. So yes, he segmented and got people to... Um, help him but when it came to getting uh, in, in, uh, into contact with God it was him on the mountain alone it wasn't anybody else so he was getting the download from heaven he was getting the word from God and how to direct all these people yes there was leaders and and there were segmentations amongst them but he was getting revelation from God to give to all of them and to help them understand this but those people in the meanwhile were building altars and, and idols to other gods, gods that were um, made from gold with their own hands. And that's how it is sometimes with us. Instead, when a leader tells us something, we want to rebel against them. We don't want to do it because what we see in the natural makes sense to us. Let us make this God because we can see it. But here's Moses speaking to the God, Almighty God, and they were getting so annoyed that he's taking so long. And sometimes that's how we are. Oh, the process is taking too long. This is taking too long. Everything is taking too long. So let's just rebel against the leader. Let's just rebel against him. Let's just uh, do whatever we want to do. Let's just follow our own ways and we see that it leads to destruction. It does not lead to good because when Moses came back, he was so angry and what's supposed to be done could not have been done because there they had to destroy all those idols again and it's just a whole lot of mess that happens when you don't follow the leader that's getting the download from heaven. We don't want the edification. Instead, we just want... Um, to follow the carnal, the fleshly things. And even even with um, government especially, we see that people right now, um, uh, they, they like to fight. They, they like to uh, throw out massive... Yeah. massive uh, government. Yes, even yeah. at workplaces we see that um, things are happening. But why should this be? Because people don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. They want to challenge uh, the, the, the governments. They want to challenge the, the management. They want to throw fights. And God says in his, in his word, if it's possible, live at peace with all men. So those people who are bringing all these fights and challenges, just know that you are going against God's word. And that's a dangerous place to be. Absolutely. I like what Karina is saying here that... Um, 
that we 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 need to honor our leaders because if we don't honor our leaders then we we actually rebelling against God because he's put leaders there for our protection and they've been given the mandate and the authority to look after us so it's imperative for us to to um, to, to, to honor them and give them the respect um, because they're accountable to God for for Absolutely. how they lead us so we can't now we we don't have that accountability they do so when we actually challenge them we're rebelling against god and when we rebel against god then satan comes in and uh then we follow in the ways of the father of lies and in the ways of the wicked one and when we submit to our leadership then we honor god i mean obviously submission must be in line with the word of god if your leaders tell you to worship idols like what happened with shadrach meshach nebuchadnezzar uh, I mean, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and okay. Abednego, when, when Nebuchadnezzar told them to worship idols, they had to honor the word of God. So you need to honor your leaders, but if they tell you to dishonor the word of God, then you, your word of God is your, your, uh, your highest authority. So anything that a leader tells you, whether it be a leader in a home, or a leader in the workplace, or a leader in government, or a leader in church, if their leadership uh, uh, is uh, dishonoring the word of God, then that is where you put the word above the leadership. But if the leadership is in line with the word of God, you never rebel against it. Because when you rebel in them, you're actually rebelling against God. And rebelling in the sight of God is as good as witchcraft. And we remember the time of um, the angels. Satan rebelled against God and he was cast out of heaven. So when you rebel against God, you are cast out of heaven, meaning that heaven is not your home. Hell is there to be your home. Absolutely. You will be cast out with all the demons and Satan. Mm -hmm. So uh, another thing is, I mean, you were talking about Moses now. Uh, when he was in leadership, his own siblings rebelled against him. Mm -hmm. they, they, they made fun of his uh, choice of a wife. And uh, they disrespected him by uh, not celebrating or not honoring his decision of the wife that he chose. And as a result, what happened? Uh, uh, leprosy came upon Mo, uh, uh, Miriam and, and upon Aaron. So your leader's choices is not for you to judge. Amen. It's not for you to criticize. That is for God and that man that is under your, over, uh, over you for, to deal with. The choices your leaders make is not for you to judge and to criticize and to mm. gossip and to Absolutely. condemn. That is a choice that he has to be accountable to God for. So if you are under leadership and they're making choices in their personal lives and you don't like it, that is not your business. Absolutely. That is not your business. Let God and that man that is over you to, uh, to address that issue. The, the key here is you need to respect your authorities and you need to honor them. I mean, even in homes, it is so important to respect your families, you know, uh, your spiritual home. Your, 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 your natural biological home. I mean, it's so sad to see that there's so much of disrespect in homes for adults. Uh, people assume because you're a blended family, the children don't have to respect the blended mom or the blended dad. Mm -hmm. Respect is so important. Absolutely. I mean, you see how children treat their parents. Mm -hmm. We need to be respectful and we need to understand that um, a, a quality of, of godliness is respecting one another. The Bible says that we must esteem one another more highly Amen. than ourselves. And one way you, you esteem one another is by respecting people. So, you know, uh, respect doesn't come with because you respect me, I'm going to respect you. It's the same attitude of love. Whether you do good to me or not, I'm going to love you. Whether you do good to me or not, I'm going to respect you. Amen. Because that is what the Bible says. Jesus esteemed all the sinners more highly than himself when he was on the cross of Calvary. He esteemed everybody highly than themselves by taking away all our sins. So who gives us the right to dishonor people and disrespect people? Mm. We don't have that right. We don't have that mandate. Absolutely. So, so leadership, uh, respecting our leaders is important, whether they're leaders in our homes, whether they're in government, our churches. God put them there for our protection. Don't think you will know more than them. I think that's so important because uh, firstly, in the very beginning when we find that Adam actually um, disrespected, um, when Adam and Eve disrespected God, we find that they've been cut off from the blessing, from, from the Garden of Eden which was created for them. 
Guess this, they lose their blessing, there's a consequence that they face. Now they in sin, the world also is impacted by it. So there's always a consequence that has a ripple effect on what you do as a person. If you're disrespecting the, the, the leader, you are blocking your blessing, which could have impacted your family, and you could have been, um, been a blessing to others, but now you cut your blessing short. So how are you going to bless others? It's cut short because you chose to disrespect and dishonor them and rather maybe speak bad about them. And we see how what happened in Moses' case, what happened to his sister. So if God did it then, what stops him from doing it now? He's the same God then. And people think, no, you can disrespect your leaders because no one's watching. You can talk about them. But that is not true. God sees and he knows your heart. So he knows what you are thinking. He knows you inside out. So how you're treating your leaders, there's always going to be a consequence later on for what you are doing. Because if they are hearing from God, and if you are dishonoring that, you're going against God himself. You're going against the plans of God himself. And that is not good because you're not only coming against your own future, but it's going to have an impact on other people as well and the choices you make. I know um, sometimes uh, people would give you counsel and tell you, you know what, you're making a wrong decision now in, in, in maybe a relationship or you're making a wrong decision now according to the word of god this is not how you're supposed to live your life because a lot of people now do not take correction that you they they live in sin they live in sexual relationships that they are not supposed to be and when you correct them when leaders correct them in the word of god they get offended jumping from church to church having no covering which is very bad and when you don't have covering, it's very easily that the devil will start attacking you and you'll think, why all these things are happening? But it's a simple thing that you didn't take correction because the Bible is very clear. Don't live in sin, um, in sexual relationships without being married. There's a, there's a lot of things that you just don't do, but you don't do it for, your, um, for anybody else, but you do it to honor God. Your body is the temple of God. And that is why you honor God, you honor your leaders, you honor who God has placed in your life. And, and you don't uh, rebel against them, but you, ha you listen, you listen to what they have to say. Even with the disciples, they had to listen to what Jesus had to say. They had to listen for instruction. And there came a time where they couldn't even cast out um, demons. So they had to listen to what Jesus is saying. They had to listen and be obedient to what, they were, what Jesus was saying. So when we don't listen, we are blocking our blessings and we, we, we get premature uh, results, things that not supposed to be the way it's supposed to be, but it, it actually came out that way. So we need to be very careful on what we are doing, especially when it comes to, to leaders. So, yeah, honor your leaders because God put them there to protect you and to take care of you. So don't dishonor them because you're opening yourself up for Satan to come and wipe you out. They are there to protect you. You know, you brought something up, Karina, that was so critical, where you said people go from church to church and they, they go church hopping because they're not happy with the leaders, etc., etc. I mean, look at, the, look at the impact if you had to go house to house hopping. Did you ever think about it? If you had to go house to house hopping, you would become very unsettled. Mm. You will not be stable. You will not be at peace. You will not have been. You will not be able to have a a, a a planned life because you're going from one house to another house to another house. You are going to become one messed up, confused person because you're in this house today with this family. You're in that house tomorrow with mm. that family. You you got you don't know how to develop a culture with anybody mm. because when you have a, a family uh, or, or when you work in in an environment, you develop you create a culture so that your gifts can work for you. But now if you jump from house to house every day, you, you are, you're gonna become a messed up person because you wouldn't know what culture, you wouldn't know what your heritage is, you wouldn't know what your blessings are, you would not be able to develop relationships with anybody because every day you're in a new house and you, you end up being a messed up person because you're developing soul ties with people that you're not even familiar with and, and, mm, and, and no long enough to be able to say, I got a good soul tie here. So that's what happens when you do spiritual hopping. 
when you go from church to church you you bec- you don't know you don't have a firm foundation you can't build solid family relationships with the church folk you won't be able to use your gifts to the best Absolutely. of the ability because today someone needs your gift tomorrow you another church and that person needs to follow through on that gift mm. for the next stage of their lives but you can't even end up discipling you True. if you God has called you to disciple people you can't even disciple because you were there today to be such an inspiration mm. to them suddenly tomorrow you're in another church you you never end up finishing your task you start something in one church and you can't finish it because you the same thing you're starting in that church you're starting it in every other church without finishing it mm. and so people taste a bit of what you have to give them that gift because your gift is not for you it's for other people they taste the gift and before you know it they they they, they, they want more of it and you can't finish your task in feeding them a full meal because of the fact that you just left so house church hopping is dangerous you don't have covering and you don't have security and you are not able to use the gifts of God and you never be able to have strong family relationships with your spiritual home because your spiritual home is where you develop family relationships where you have corporate uh, anointing and where you are able to let your gifts work for you so if you are listening to us and you are church hopping please you are in dangerous ground and you are heading yourself for trouble you don't have covering you cannot use your gifts and then you want to wonder why when you get to heaven that your rewards are not there because you didn't finish mm-hmm. what you started because you tried to start in every church something and you True. actually didn't complete it so stop church hopping and get the Lord uh, find out from the Lord where you need to have your spiritual home and be in that spiritual home because the same impact that you would have when you had to jump from house to house it will be the outcome of the impact of church hopping it's important for you to honor the people that God put in your place in uh, uh, for you to be under their leadership because they're there to protect you and also for children in families do not disrespect your parents yep. because the Bible says honor your father and mother so that you will have a long good life so honor your parents don't think you know much than them mm. because you went to school True. or because you've got some experience or because you have uh, entertainment or because you know how to use a phone better than mm. them or because you can read and write English and mm. they can't read and write English the Bible doesn't give you a condition to honor the Bible True. says honor your parents so that you will have a long good life you know I, 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 Satan likes to manipulate there's a scripture where Peter talks about where he says uh, parents um, uh, children honor your parents and respect them and then the next uh, 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 verse he says Par- parents do not frustrate your children do not anger your children do not bring wrath cause your children to be in anger so children manipulate and they use that as a scapegoat to say my parents are making me angry they are frustrating me therefore I disrespect them there's no condition between one and two True. they're two separate verses honor your parents second parents do not frustrate and anger your children so in those two scriptures one is not dependent on the other it doesn't say parents if I mean children if your parents look after you well and not bring you to anger and not frustrate you then you must honor them that's not what the word says so do not put a condition to you being rude and disrespectful the Bible is very clear honor your parents your parents are your spiritual parents your biological parents and if you're in a blended family your blended parents so don't go disrespecting the parents and then wonder later on to, uh, why your lives are miserable you have yourself to blame because you don't have any spiritual Amen. covering I mean I look in your life through thick and thin no matter what you went through you honored your parents mm-hmm. you're enjoying the benefits there sure. hey? you're enjoying the sure. benefits Cyril. so it's important I speak from a position where I rebelled against my parents I rebelled because I couldn't handle the, the my, my dad provoking me with, with him being an alcoholism and that so I manipulated the system to say I have every right to rebel against my parents rebel against my father because he's an alcoholic that was me manipulating the Word of God and saying, my father is causing me to be frustrated therefore I have a reason to rebel against him that was how I manipulated the word and guess what only when I made peace with dad at the age of 32 my life began to take order it began to take shape and I began to see the blessings of God but before the age of 32 I lived under curses because I had no protection because I rebelled against my father so I'm saying to you today if you're a child listening to me please don't make all the mistakes yourself when you can hear from us Mm. who have been there and done that don't wait till you're 40 or 32 like me and realize hello why didn't anybody tell me that 
I'm telling you today, honor your parents whether they're good to you or not, mm. whether they're evil or good. Honor them because mm. the Bible says honor your parents. Do not put a condition to you respecting them and honoring them. The minute you do that, there's a spiritual covering over your life. Mm. That no matter what happens in your home or what happens yeah. in your life, you will see the benefits thereof. My, my two sisters, they respected my mom and dad no matter what happened in the home. And they've never been divorced. Sure. They've always had a good life. They've had a quality of life. They've had a blessed life. Married to one spouse. I, this is my third husband. After I got born again, this was the best choice. But in this best choice, also came with me making peace with my father. Wow. And God restored. So God can fix up. If you've made mistakes and you got two husbands and you divorced, when you repent, mm. God can fix up and make your life right like he did with me the the 10 years i'm now with sam feels like he's my only husband wow. like i've never been married before because when the bible says if my people who are called by my name will humble mm. themselves and repent and turn from their wicked ways and seek me i will heal their land when god healed my land it was as if i was never married before he healed my land because i chose to do it god's way repent ask God for forgiveness and then ask my daddy for forgiveness and when I began to uh, see my dad with respect and honor my life turned around that it, I feel even though married to Sam for 10 years like I've never been uh, divorced and that he was like as if he was the only husband I have and that my children even though I have a blended daughter I feel like the three kids are mine Amen. the frustrations I have with children not listening I feed it for three of them like a normal mother the way I, I treat them when they upset me mm. is like a normal mother. But God restored. Amen. God restored quality of life in this last 10 years because I chose to do it God's way. So if you have made mistakes and you have went down the long way because you have rebelled against your parents, no matter how many spouses you have, no matter how many children you have from how many men, if you can be like that prostitute woman where she was married, uh, she was living with seven different men at different times, and God said to her, go sin no more. She chose to repent and turn from her wicked ways. God corrected that mistake. God corrected my life. So I'm telling you and I'm speaking from experience. Respect your parents. It comes with long life and good life and honor and a good inheritance. I Amen. love you. Amen. That's so true because if you love God and if you're saying that you love God, then you will honor your mom and your dad. You will honor your leaders because the first and foremost commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul. And then he tells us to honor our, our mother and our father. But at the same time, if you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul, you will not disrespect your leaders. You will not um, have heated agendas against them or provoke them. Or, or do something against them or speak bad about them or manipulate them or manipulate them, them. I mean, sorry I had to interject there. the amount of manipulation children now do on their parents is yes, sick absolutely. it's sick you know in blended families children love to manipulate just to get their way that is a spirit of it's demonic mm -hmm. demonic so it's very important that you don't do that and if you love God, you need to seek your heart right now. And you need to say, Father, is there anything in my heart that, um, that is not of you in my heart? Because I know I was, I was, uh, we were watching Joni Table talk and she says, there's actually a spirit of Absalom. There's a spirit that is manipulative. There's a spirit of Jeze Jezebel. There's all these spirits that are trying to overthrow leaders. So you need to be on guard. And I cannot stress the amount that you need to be on guard. But you have to be on guard. You need to be prayed, prayed up. You need to take precaution of what is yet to come. Because this is just the beginning of, of what is yet to come. There's going to be deception. There's going to be a lot of deception. So you really need to be prayed up. If you are a leader, you need to be prayed up. That you don't get manipulated by any Jezebel. That you don't get overthrown by an Absalom. Because I'm telling you, if you are not prayed up, then you are going to be overthrown. And if you are the ones that are speaking against your leaders, there is a consequence that you're going to face. Because there is a God that listens and He is ever present in, to what everybody is doing. He knows when a sparrow dies. He knows when a leaf dies. He knows the seasons. He knows everything. So you can hide for now and pretend, but there will come a time 
when God is going to be before you and you have to stand accountable for everything that you're doing. We're not saying this to scare you, but this is all truth. This is from the Bible that if you don't honor and if you don't respect your, your leaders, there's always going to be a repercussion that's going to follow. And for anyone listening and you've got the spirit of manipulation, that spirit can leave you now. If you give us authority to release it from you, then this is simple. You spirit of Jezebel, you spirit of rebellion, and you spirit of manipulation. I command you now, in the name of Jesus, at the sound of my voice, to leave the viewers that are watching this, because they have agreed that they are letting go of that manipulating, rebellious Jezebel spirit now, in In Jesus' name. name. We release you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, child of God, and God will exalt you. And the biggest form of humility is respecting everybody, esteeming people more highly than yourselves, and loving people. Amen. I love you.